UFC recently announced that Khabib Nurmagomedov will be making his third title defense against Justin Gaethje on October 24th. Joe Rogan reacted and posted this on his Instagram saying, It would be impossible for me to be more excited about this fight. The return of the GOAT lightweight king at Khabib Nurmagomedov versus his most dangerous challenger at Justin Gaethje. I can't effing wait. Khabib commented on the post saying, October Justin and April GSP. Khamzat Shumayev in a recent interview with Brett Okamoto says he's ready to fight everybody. I don't think they want to give me like top fighter because I have only two fights but if they give I will be happy and uh, they smash somebody from top 10. Have you watched a lot of UFC? Are there guys in this division? Yes, that of course. I look at everybody. I know everybody. I look I, I look at the Habib. I, have, I take some technique from Habib. I look at the Postman. I take from he, from John Jones, from Alex. I look at everything that they have of the MMA. I will be Einstein in the MMA. Then I will receive it. I don't know. You have two cents? Sen kan Michael Bisping on the Believe in Me podcast speaks on Mauricio Shogun who has win over Antonio Rogerio Noguera. Co-main event, uh, great fight, great awesome. fight. Awesome. Yeah, Noguera looked very dangerous early. Just predominantly throwing that, uh, I think it was Southpaw, was he orthodox? The, the, the backhand, the, he was Southpaw, so the straight left, the right hook, over yeah. and over again. That was like his go-to, but he was having Shogun in a lot of problems, forced Shogun to get the takedown. I've got to say, this fight looked very, very similar to the first two fights, but it was right. an awesome performance from both guys. You mentioned at the start of the fight, there was a feeling out process. They were a little tentative, but that's to be expected. Anytime two guys I've had two fights, it's the rubber match, they've shared the octagon, you know, or the ring for a long period of time, they know what each other is capable of, they know they're both deadly with the hands or the feet, they know the dangers on the ground, you gotta be f***ing careful, you can't go into that foolishly, you can't start just, f it. I'm gonna start hard, I'm gonna run at the guy and I'm gonna just, you know, it's like, Let's see what he's going to give me. Let's see if he comes with a different approach. Let's try and get a read on his timing, see what he's going to attack me with. You know, it's always hard. You know, I was talking to my wife about this. Uh, you know, as a fighter, when you're going out there, you know, like the, the, the last couple of days leading up to a fight, you, you're overthinking the opening sequence. But the opening sequence is the hardest part. After that, once you get hit a few times and that feeling out process is gone, you just, you're in the moment. You're just doing what you've done in sparring. But those opening sequences, you know, you just, I mean, obviously on the night, you just, you do whatever happens. But when you're in your hotel room, I'm like, okay, so what should I do? Do I wait for him to come with me first? Do I just run at him, go crazy? What do I open with? Do I open with the right hand? Should I give him a little body kick start? How the f do I start this fight? Because if I do something, it's going to fall into his game plan. Or if I stand back, I'm just waiting for him to attack me. So it's a big mind. F and that is what's called the nerves and that's what's called the demons or the octagon jitters whatever you want to call it with you overthink every single situation and certainly when you share the octagon as i said a number of times with the gentleman across from you you know that kind of happens but the fight delivered congrats to shogun but uh mm -hmm. it was close Thank <laughs> you.
Kenny Florin on the Anakin Florin podcast speaks on Fabrice Verdum's win over Alexander Gustafsson. You know, it, it would be pretty hard to redeem himself, I thought, just based on Fabrizio and everything he's accomplished in submission wrestling and jiu-jitsu and, and in the MMA world uh, off of his fight against Olenek, where he just, he, he didn't look inspired. He looked like he was in terrible shape. This was not the Fabrizio Verdum that we were, we were prepared for. This time around, he really did redeem himself. He 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 looked different physically. He looked different technically, strategically. He went out there like he really wanted to win that fight. Um, found a way to bring it down to the ground against uh, Alexander Gustafsson. And um, it was Gustafsson who looked rusty uh, and not Fabricio Verdum. Uh, Verdum was all over him once the fight hit the mat. A beautiful armbar for the finish. Uh, again, cementing himself as one of the best uh, submission uh, guys to ever compete in the heavyweight division. So, uh, awesome way for Fabrizio to come back, and he did it against a very tough guy in Alexander Gustafson. Checking in, guys. I just want to say hello. Everything is going well. The last few days, I've been a little tired, so I've just been chilling around the house. But uh, today, finally getting, getting the horses out. i got to do a bunch of stuff around the house, clean their stalls. But I just want to say thank you guys for all the support and and uh, always sticking by me, all the people that encourage me and send me great messages, thank you. And to the guys that send me, you know, not so good messages, thank you as well. That's that's what keeps me going and keeps that fire brewing inside me. But we truly are getting better, and I hope you guys have a good week, and I love you guys all. Thank you. So listen, guys, I'm I'm about to, I'm about to lose it. Okay, I'm about to lose it, right? So I'm I'm getting out of my apartment complex, right? Because I have some apartments that are renting. So I take off my mask. How soon I do that, there is this guy walking towards me, right? And he sees me without the mask. He freaking flee from the scene. He just took off. He's just like, he. he I felt like he's just so an alien or something. Guys, listen. If you wear the mask, right? If you wear the mask, like they probably say, you wear the mask, you're not supposed to be safe. What's going on with people? What's going on, man? You, can you, I just don't get it. All right, I'm down here at uh, Huntington Beach um, City Hall. And I told everybody that I want to be a police officer. I think I'm gonna change my game just for the CMP myself. Uh, we're gonna run for city council. Here's my papers. Now I just need 30 signatures from voters here in Huntington Beach. Tito Ortiz, Huntington Beach City Council. I like the sound of that. Help me out. Let's do this, people. Nomination paper for my city council. I got the first signature. Now it's time to get 30 more. So talking about getting some road work right now, I'm actually uh, out getting my nomination paper signed by Huntington Beach Register Voters. So I'm driving around to all my friends' uh, businesses. Let's make a difference uh, here in Huntington Beach. Tito, for HP City Council. 2020, baby. So I went down to City Hall today, went down to get all my paperwork and my nomination papers for City Council of Huntington Beach. And they said I needed 20 signatures. Well, I uh, couldn't do that. I got 30. That's right. 30 signatures in about an hour and a half. People like the idea. I love the idea. Let's do something great for Huntington Beach. Tito Ortiz, City Council, 2020. Sounds good to me. All right, so everybody who has been flooding my direct messages on here on Instagram, um, thank you so much for your support. I got the 30 uh, signatures really quick. It only took me about an hour and a half to two hours. I had to do some uh, door knocking, but uh, you know it's a hard time right now with COVID going through. Um, but I got 30 signatures in less than two hours. And I got a huge response on my social media from all my fans here in Huntington Beach. They were like, hey, I'll do my paddleboard to come to your house. I'll come knock on your house. Here's my address, come to my house. So hold on, I'll still be needing those signatures. Hopefully not soon, but in time. I just want to do a good thing for uh, 
our city of Huntington Beach. You know, I was born and raised here. And uh, for the future of my children is really important. The future of this community is very important. And being the conservative that I am, uh, I think it's time to take control. And uh, I'm willing to do it.